I'm Jeanette Keynes from Jewelry Arts Inc. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get a scratch out of an opal and how to get that gorgeous shine back without risking your stone. And on top of it all, you're not gonna need expensive lapidary equipment. So we have a common problem in the studio. We've got a little, little nickaroo in, in this gorgeous opal, which is actually not a big deal to fix. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So take a look. That sexy opal, look at the juicy goodness. But right up there on the top, on the right hand side, there was like a little nick. Um, and we kind of sanded it out and I'll show you how we did that. And then I'm gonna show you how you can safely put a high polish on. Because the whole thing with opals is their advantage is their disadvantage. Because basically they're easy to to shine or whatever, it doesn't take a lot, but that means it's also easy to put a nick in them or get in a rough spot. But opals are very, very heat sensitive, which means normally when you do lapidary work, anybody who's ever done any lapidary work, like you put it on a dop stick and you're using a wheel, like a lapidary wheel or something on the flex shaft that, that's going, and that builds up heat. And if you let that happen to your opal, it can get little cracks. It's like opals and heat, like, do not like each other. So to me, although of course you can learn to do it safely on a wheel and all that kind of thing. Like if you haven't done a lot, a lot of lapidary work, to me it makes so much more sense. Just do it by hand. We'll use a little cerium oxide, which is our polishing. That's my crappy handwriting, but cerium oxide is a polishing compound. I'm going to use whatever piece of like leather you can find and some water. And we're going to make a slurry on here and we're going to by hand rub it. Now, the advantage of that is, unless you have bionic arms, you cannot do it enough to heat up your opal. So you can't damage it. So I feel like sometimes people always like go straight to like, I'm going to the flex shaft or I need this equipment, but a lot of times actually doing something by hand is safer and more controllable. So that's what we're gonna do. Like, so we're not gonna put this on a dop stick and heat it and to put it on the, cause that's also a little bit risky when you're not used to working with opals. I just have my uh, low tech glove on, which you don't have to use a glove, but I'm gonna hold it and we're gonna polish it right on here. Okay, so just to show you though, by the way, to take out that little scratch, we used the magic sandpaper because these come in really fine grits all the way up to 12,000. So it's like, we went through, what did we, we started with uh, 8,000? Yeah, no, we started, yeah, the, the, uh, the like the 400, which is- um, Oh, we, so 1,500. Yeah. So we use the 1,500, which is the equivalent of like 400 grit. Um, just to take out the nick. So you don't see the nick anymore, but now it's not, you know, that's not so shiny anymore. Because uh, all you do when you use this, if you've never used these before, is you literally just take a piece, you wrap it around this nice little foam guy, and it gives you a lot of control so you can smooth it right. Because what did that take you guys? Like 10 minutes. Maybe. Yeah. Because yeah. like I was going to film it, and basically they were already done by the time mine came out. So yeah. it happened very quickly. Okay, so scrap piece of leather. Honestly, if you really like had no leather at home, you could fold up a, a few paper towels and just something soft and relatively absorbent. And cerium oxide is the kind of thing, like that's not hard to get. It's a real common, it's basically for putting a high polish on your stones. So I have a little bit of water right here. So, cause you're making a slurry, you know? So you're just making some wet goopiness. That's the technical term. See what I mean? Something like that. And what you'll notice is as you do this, it'll start to sort of dry because the leather starts to like wick the water away. If it starts to get a little dry, you just add a little more water. But so I'm gonna take this and it's this area, by the way, right over here that was cleaned up. But like I said, you see how now, I don't know if you can see, but like, it's just a little dull. It's not quite as, as juicy and shiny as we want it to be. Okay, so I am literally gonna take this and you see what I mean? You're gonna have to keep Keep adding the water and you're gonna take it, take it, and you're gonna rub it. And keep dipping it in the water to keep it wet. And you'll see, it's not, like I said, the advantage of this, it's not like if you were trying to clean up something on a sapphire and you're gonna be here like forever and ever trying to get that shine back. So basically you do it for a few minutes and then we'll just sort of wipe it off and we'll look at it. Cause we're just gonna do this and I'm just moving it around this whole section. Do you okay. see what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to hold it in one spot. 
I'm trying to get that kind of whole area. Because a lot of times people don't think of the low tech thing. You know, they think, oh, well, I don't have like a whole set of lapidary wheels. I can't do that. And the fact of the matter is low tech works great. A uh, whole lot cheaper. <laughs> and with something like an Opal, it's much safer. You know, it's so easy to get carried away on a lapidary wheel. Believe me. Okay. So let me rinse it and I'll uh, kind of wipe it off. I don't know if we're done yet, but we'll take a look at it. And you've got to dry it because of course when it's wet, it looks nice and shiny, but that doesn't necessarily mean we've gotten the polish that we want. <laughs> oh wow. See what I mean? Oh, wow. There, I'll just like rest my hand there so that hopefully you can see it. Beautiful. So like take, we'll take a really good look at it everywhere. And if there's any place that's a little dull, we'll just do it. But you see what I mean? Like what did that take? Like two minutes or something mm -hmm. like that? No risk to your opal. You know, leather, water, cerium oxide. Uh, people underestimate low tech, and a lot of times it's actually the best option. And yay! Yeah. Okay. Great. So, like, I think I'll I'll move this around and do a little bit more to make sure we've gotten that whole area. But you know, this is it. So after, after you have a piece of jewelry that's already made, and let's say you scuffed up your opal while it's all set and everything, can you use this stuff? To you can, it? yeah. Absolutely. I mean, on the bright side, if it's in a bezel, you know you've scuffed up the part that's visible. So you can just hold the jewelry, you know what I mean, if this were in a ring or whatever. Uh -huh. Now, it's a little easier to do, don't get me wrong, if, the, if it's not in a piece of jewelry. But if it's in the piece of jewelry, I just hold on to it and do the same exact okay. thing. Okay, so like I said, I want you to just, you know, swirl around and when it gets a little dry, add a little more water, add a little more compound. And so, you get that compound from a jewelry supply. Yeah, any of the jewelry supply places. Cerium oxide is one of those, like, it's a staple. Okay. Um, I'm sure we'll have it on our website too so that people can get it, but it's not like a, a rare or exotic material. Okay, so I want you to just do this a little bit, clean it off, take a, and just look all the way around. And if there's any place that has a little bit of dullness, okay, that's it. That's great. And basically when it's all done, we'll take another like sexy close up of it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you see that one sexy, gorgeous opal, all beautiful and shiny and ready to be set. So you did a great job. Look at that baby, I'm like, mmm, delicious. See that shine? Fantastic.